My colleague Vinaya Deshpande, who has got us uh, that interview, is now joining us on the broadcast. Vinaya, while it is only given that the opposition is going to actually have a field day with the BJP governments in both Maharashtra and Karnataka, sparring over this issue for years on end now. However, what is it that the opposition is choosing to stand by, especially the people in Maharashtra and Karnataka? How are they choosing to respond to it, whether it is the NCP or even the Congress party? Well, we have seen very strong voices of dissent coming on the issue, made be from the Shiv Sena, led by Uddhav Thakre, made be from the NCP, made be by the Congress. The issue of Maharashtra-Karnataka border has been an, a contentious issue for decades at end now. What is peculiar is, uh, irrespective of whichever party is in power, uh, the issue and the stance of the party remain the same and that is why the opposition has now targeted the BJP saying that though it is the BJP at the helm in both the states, uh, we are seeing completely contradictory voices coming in. In fact, Karnataka trying to stake claim on newer territories of Maharashtra which were henceforth, uh, which were before this not discussed and that is what is uh, uh, making the NCP spokesperson Clyde Crasto now ask the central leadership of the BJP to intervene in this issue and give a rap on the knuckles of uh, Basavaraj Bommai, the Karnataka chief minister who has been making statements one after the other on the issue. Meanwhile, Maharashtra government has in a stance that is calming in nature said that there could be a positive arrangement in days to come now. Meanwhile, it has accepted the invitation extended by the Maharashtrian organizations in Belgavi in Karnataka. A letter was written to uh, both the nodal ministers and was delivered to them yesterday. Now, both these nodal ministers are slated to visit Belgavi on the 3rd of December where they have said that it is likely that they will make a positive announcement. So the uh, government on its part is trying to play it cool, but we are seeing one after the other statements coming up from Karnataka, especially on the background of the elections that are impending in that state. Meanwhile, the legal battle will take its own course, though the court in the past has said, indicated that it is better that both the states resolve this issue amicably because otherwise it is likely to open a Pandora's box when it comes to reorganization of states on a linguistic basis. Back to you. Right. Vinaya, like you rightly mentioned, the government at the center is right now choosing to fence it. They have not yet involved themselves in this entire controversy or said anything, uh, you know, getting the both the BJP governments in Maharashtra and Karnataka to actually call, uh, you know, uh, extend that olive branch to one another because it's a very, very tricky issue. However, considering the matter is still sub judice, what is it that the controversy at the moment, how is it standing? If you can briefly explain that for our viewers and the kind of exchange of barbs that have happened both ways. How is that playing out? Well, see, the centre has so far decided to remain mum is what we have all seen. But at the same time, whether it be the BJP in Maharashtra or the BJP in Karnataka, a completely opposite stances have come out. In fact, when the Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra, Devendra Fadnavis, who is a very senior BJP leader from the state, said that not a single village from Maharashtra will be handed over to Karnataka, and there's no question of it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Karnataka Chief Minister said that it was an outrageous statement to be made. Uh, now, with such kind of things, uh, the Deputy Chief Minister then tried to mellow down his stance, saying that there was nothing controversial he spoke, and in fact, he just gave out a stance with the Maharashtra government had put forth in the court of law and that he expects that the issue will be resolved soon. Hmm. The fact is that we have seen over a period of time this issue is raked continuously hmm. uh, without any solution really and emotions still continue to run very high. What it ends up doing actually is hmm. it, it ends up inconveniencing all the people who reside in those border areas for the last few days while the state transport buses on both the sides have been affected. Hmm. We are seeing that people from Karnataka who come in large numbers to visit uh, the popular deity Vithala in uh, Pandharpur, in hmm. Solapur, their transport is being affected. People's movement from areas like Kolhapur, Sangli, Satara towards Karnataka is affected. We saw protests just two days ago 
trying to stop the Bengaluru Pune highway which is an arterial road and which has seen a lot of traffic so in the end it is inconveniencing the people at large but uh, we have seen that this issue is uh, raised every now and then it still uh, has a very high emotive value and hmm. it still has has not been resolved Back right vinaya uh, see on please let me uh, you know get the karnataka aspect also as our colleague harish is also joining us on the broadcast harish the fact that karnataka chief minister basavaraj bomai said that uh, villages in sangli have gone ahead and you know uh, put out this uh, resolution together that because of this water crisis there needs to be a merging of villages into karnataka that crucial statement has obviously led to this fresh war of words that have happened between both uh, the basavaraj bomai and also devendra fadnavis when it comes to people on ground i'm sure you have been part of these various ground reports that you have gotten from marathi speaking uh, you know the population around belagavi and other small villages what is the sentiment on ground uh, that you see even as politics is being played out in this crucial issue well over the last uh, at least 10 odd years there has been a very focused effort to ensure that uh, residents especially marathi speaking population in belagavi Uh, and other places in Karnataka bordering around Belagavi do not have any crowds they do not find any real reason to demand that their villages be merged or be made part of Maharashtra we've seen a lot of development activity in that vicinity just to ensure that uh, there is no crowds whatsoever from the residents in fact uh, to make a statement that Belagavi is a essential part of the state uh, remember the government in uh, 2008 had decided to uh, uh, carry out one of the session mm. that's the winter session of the legislature karnataka legislature in belagavi suvarna sauda that's almost a replica mm. of vidhan sauda was built in belagavi now every year in december we have a session of the karnataka legislature that happens in belagavi so that's the importance that the state attaches to belagavi and all the villages of belagavi so that message is being sent out at the same time there has been a lot of work over the last decade or so in the belagavi region now right. what really triggered this war of words is the fact that you had uh, two ministers of the Mar- maharashtra government being appointed to look at this entire legal issue one second what really irked the karnataka government is the fact that the maharashtra government said they would extend their social welfare schemes and pension schemes to marathi speaking population mm-hmm. in karnataka uh, the ones who would have uh, fought for the cause of maharashtra and other such uh, social welfare schemes to villages here now that's what really triggered this war of words the same day you had uh, basuraj bomai coming out and saying well it's not a healthy development it's a provocative statement and if this is the line of argument then there are villages in the jat uh, taluk of uh, maharashtra which have uh, vocally demanded that uh, they be made part of karnataka so we will have to push for that or pursue that kind of a demand so it's not a healthy development in a a country that's a union of states so that was the line of karnataka at the same time parallelly you have karnataka government ensuring that when this case comes up for hearing uh, in supreme court they have a very strong case they are also referring to earlier observations of supreme court saying that the supreme court earlier had said that uh, this is something that should be resolved among both the states one second it would be too late now to look at the uh, In, in a way reorganizing regions between two states on linguistic lines that would open up pandora's box in the country that was the argument of the supreme court earlier so karnataka saying on legal front yeah. we are on a very strong wicket there's yeah. absolutely no scope uh, for the demand of maharashtra to be entertained and perhaps they're hopeful the supreme court will say the petition of maharashtra is not maintainable right and let's see how does this actually go on to play out because remember this is a controversy that's been going on for 65 years and it is only escalating at the moment with the war of words not really stopping